Now last year, Microsoft wowed everyone with its dual screen devices. There's the Surface Duo, an Android powered device, and there's the Surface Neo. This device was built around a new version of Windows called Windows 10X. This version of Windows was built for dual screen PCs, except Windows 10X might show up for single screen devices first. To make a lot more sense of things, we're bringing in Mary Jo Foley of ZDNet. She's been covering tech for 30 years and has reported tons of scoops on Microsoft. Mary Jo, can you walk us through what Windows 10X was supposed to accomplish? What I would like to know is what makes it different from 10. Yeah, so, you know, 10X is, Microsoft calls it a mode, I think, of Windows 10 or a variant of Windows 10, but it's really not like Windows 10 from the ground up. It's very different, even though it has Windows 10 in the name. It's the product that we wrote about a lot when it was codenamed Santorini and sometimes also called Windows Lite. So it looks a lot like Android when you see screenshots of it. Like if you've ever used the Microsoft Launcher on your Android phone, that's what it looks like. It has all the apps arranged in a grid like that with the most recently accessed documents that you have right under it with the Windows search bar at the very top. We think that's what the UI is gonna look like on 10X. In Microsoft's announcement of Windows 10X, Microsoft said, quote, Windows 10X is designed for new dual screen PCs and not as an OS upgrade if you already own a PC. Yet the company is going ahead with introducing 10X this year for single screen devices. This is according to your own reports why is this happening? I don't want to say they lied about Windows 10X, but maybe I will say it. They lied. They said it was designed for two dual screen devices, but we knew from people we had been talking to that it wasn't actually designed exclusively for dual screen devices. It was supposed to work on new models of single screen devices like two-in-ones and clamshells, but they never would say that until very recently when they changed their plan and decided to come out with it on single screen devices first and dual screens later. Apart from a visual difference, what makes 10X different than 10 since it can run on single screen devices? There's a lot of things that are different under the covers that if everything works right, users won't know how the magic happens, uh, but it'll all be magic. So one of the things is all apps will run in containers. Um, so that will be very interesting because that means UWP apps, PWAs, and also 132 apps uh, all will be running in containers. So that will make the operating system safer and also uh, will give you an easy way to get 132 apps to run on it without having to go through the store and wait for all these developers who they were hoping would modernize their apps and put them in the store that never did. Um, so it's it's got all these new things for running existing legacy apps and new apps and uh, a new trust model built in so that um, you will know, even if an app is not in the store, that Microsoft will have certified it and verified it um, and it will be a trusted app. Also, even under the covers, Windows Core OS, if you've ever heard of that term, this is the very modularized core of Windows 10. That's what's way, way under the covers in Windows 10X that is not in Windows 10 today. Now you mentioned UWP, PWA, and Win32 apps. Could you run us through those, please? UWP, Universal Windows Platform Apps, are the apps that Microsoft sometimes calls modern apps. These are apps that have been designed to run in a modern way and be available through the Windows Store. Uh, they're all the newer apps that have been introduced, say, in the past five, six years. Those are all, mostly all UWP apps. Win32 apps are legacy apps. These are the a lot of line of business applications and old school applications that the developers never really wanted to turn over. Even things like um, Adobe Photoshop, that's a Win32 app, right? Um, a lot of the like hardcore legacy apps that were built years ago um, that Microsoft had hoped people would take kind of revise, modernize, or even rebuild for Windows 10, and that didn't happen. Those are the Win32 apps. And PWAs are basically websites turned into apps. This is a this is a concept that Google has been pioneering, but Microsoft's all on board with this too. And they're trying to get more developers to turn websites into apps 
um, using the various technologies that enable PWAs. So there's all these different kinds of apps that can run on Windows 10 and will run on Windows 10X. Um, but r right now, it's this has been very fragmented and why a lot of apps, like a lot of times Windows 10, you'll be like, is this app available? No, because the developer hasn't upgraded it or, or modernized it. So th they're hoping that 10X will help them get around this limitation to some degree by having everything run in containers. Will 10X do anything to unify all the different interfaces for these apps? This is a thing you may have heard of called Project Reunion. Project Reunion is this idea that Microsoft is uh, making libraries available to developers and this new thing called the Win UI. And they're hoping that developers will take these different libraries adopt them inside their code, and then everything will magically have a similar look and feel. It won't have exactly the same look and feel. It's not like down to the icon level, but it's it's uh, the idea that there won't be all these schisms like they have now with UWP, PWA, and uh, Win32, that everything will be a Windows app using WinUI and WebView, like a WebView control. What do we know about Windows 10X working on different processors? Can it work on both Intel and ARM? Mm, so in its first iteration, we think 10X is only going to work on Intel. But I've heard from my sources, they do want to get it to run on ARM at some point. Now let's talk about the hardware. What is going on with the Surface Neo? Will we see dual screen devices from Microsoft's partners before the Surface Duo? I mean, the Surface Neo? I know, it's confusing, Neo and Duo, right? Here's how I remember it. Android and Duo both have the letter D in them. So Duo runs Android. It runs stock Android with Microsoft adding its layer of interface on top. It's just an, a dual screen Android device that Microsoft doesn't want us to call a phone, but it's a phone. Okay. <laughs> Neo is a dual screen Windows 10 device. It was supposed to come out with 10X this holiday, same time as Duo, uh, two nine inch screens connected together with a hinge. Um, now that device is on hold for right now. Microsoft's official reason why it's on hold is because of the coronavirus pandemic. They Not just because of the supply chain issues with that, but also because they said, People right now care a lot more about buying tried and true form factors. They want a device that they know exists, it works. It's not like, maybe this will be a cool device, maybe it won't. Do I have disposable income to spend on something that's kind of a generation one device or not? So they think the demand wouldn't be there for a dual screen 10X device this holiday season. And instead they've reprioritized and they, they're creating 10X first for the single screen devices. We still think Neo will come out in some form in the future, but not this calendar year for sure. Maybe next calendar year, we're not, you know, maybe holiday 2021, maybe. Um, and as far as OEM devices, you know, like Lenovo's shown a dual screen device already. And they said it initially would ship with Windows 10 Pro and then with 10, Windows 10X. But Microsoft's not going to give them 10X for the dual screen device this calendar year. So if that device ships this year, it's not going to have 10X available for it this calendar year. Surface Neo and Surface Duo have two different operating systems. Will Windows 10X help bridge the gap between one running X and the other running Android? Yeah, so um, Microsoft tried to make the case when they announced these devices last fall that if you were a developer, you could think of them as kind of a continuation, even though they ran two totally different operating systems, one running Android, one running Windows. They were saying, they're both dual screen. You should think about designing apps for dual screen with a hinge in the middle, uh, and we'll give you a set of SDKs and emulators that will show you that the, the way you'll interact with those devices are very similar. And so if you're building an app, it shouldn't be that big a deal to build the app so it could work on both devices, even though they have different underlying operating systems. So now that the 10X uh, operating system is going to target single screens, that whole argument goes out the window, right? <laughs> so it's like, no, oh, wait, no, just kidding. If you're building for 10, uh, 10X, now you're going to think about building for a single screen. And we're going to, we still haven't given you the emulator for that, but it's coming soon. Um, and if you're building for the Android device with the two, two screens, now you're in your own world. And we want to keep giving you refreshes of our emulator and SDK, but 
now we don't have a Windows complement for that. And, you know, there are some people who think this Android operating system uh, phone is just a placeholder and that Microsoft's going to ultimately switch that out for Windows. They're not. That's a no. Uh, this is going to be an Android device. Android One with iOS in the phone world and Microsoft is not going to make the same mistake it made with Windows Phone and come out again with another Windows-based phone. At Microsoft Build, the company showed off integration with Linux. We've got Windows on Intel, Windows on ARM, Android on a Microsoft device, and now even more Linux. What is the plan for Microsoft? A lot of people are like, why are they making Windows such a hospitable environment for Linux? Right? <laughs> like, they're doing everything for Linux on Windows right now. I mean, they're supporting GPU workloads and GUI apps. And I mean, they're doing everything almost to make Linux a desktop operating system hosted on Windows, right? And so the reason they're doing that, which gets glossed over a lot, is Microsoft wants you to use Windows for everything. They want to make Windows, you know, the same way the Mac is a development environment for uh, Linux developers. They want to do that with Windows. They want Windows to be the best place you can develop Linux-based applications. And the way to do that is to have a complete Linux environment inside Windows. <laughs> it sounds crazy and backwards, right? But that that's the thinking. It's for so long, I feel like they kind of almost abandoned Windows developers and they said, you know, that's cool. You're building Windows apps. But now when they want to have Windows be the environment where you can develop apps for everything, for Android. I don't know if I'd say for iOS, I guess. Um, for Linux, um, they want to just turn Windows into this uh, platform for developers of every stripe. Mary Jo Foley, thank you very much. Where can people find your work online? People can find me on allaboutmicrosoft.com on ZDNet and also on the Twit Network, where I am the co-host of Windows Weekly. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. I'm Maya Zaktar, and I'll see you online.